they are leaving more physicians around the Chicago area in the United States than in Ethiopia. This is for the beginning. Salam, Hole, Shoma, Shotore. For those who do not speak Farsi, it is kind of, it's uh, the formal way to greet uh, a group of people. So, good morning everyone. I am Estefano Sangwell, as I have been introduced, and I'm really happy to be here today and to speak to you and to share my mind and my experience regarding diaspora and brain drain or brain gain. Sanas and me know each other uh, now for a couple of years and I was really interested to attend this conference as I think we have some points in common when it comes to development, co-development and brain gain. So the topic today what I have been asked to speak is about chance and challenge. Well, please allow me first to tell you what we have done or what I have done uh, in the past about uh, chance and opportunities. Okay, I can hold it. Okay. So, I am Ojin from Ethiopia and we have heard two or, two or three times uh, during the last speeches uh, about Ethiopia and we have also seen uh, that Ethiopia is really uh, have a problem with brain drain. And I grew up here uh, for the last 25 years and uh, I have seen as a young Ethiopian that there is a problem in the Ethiopian community uh, to work for the community and to work with Ethiopia. The reason why I came here was the war. And you probably know that Ethiopia had a problem with, with, uh, with famine and war the last maybe the last 40, 45 years. So I grew up here and uh, I had this problem to have role models, positive thinking role models in the Ethiopian community here in Germany. Uh, the Ethiopian community in Germany is all, also one of the biggest African communities here. And all the people who have been here, who came here, they had their reasons. Yeah. When we're talking about uh, diaspora, there's a reason to be a diaspora. So in case of Ethiopia, it was war, it was political instability, and they came here and they have continued to fight against the uh, um, government and they, uh, to make pollution in here, and they forgot to exist here and to work and to offer something positive for their communities. And that was the moment where I, uh, I think I was 19 or 20, and I had that time no idea what is Abitur and uh, I had no, nobody who was at university from the Ethiopian community. So I began to establish the first association that time and that was the Ethiopian Sport and Cultural Community and this Ethiopian Sport and Cultural Community is now uh, in the year of the biggest Ethiopian Cultural and Sport Community. We have now 35 communities such like what we have I've built 15 years ago and uh, there is something happening now in the Ethiopian community, but not in core development. It's still for the community here. So a couple of years later, I was a student, and uh, I decided, okay, it's time to establish a new association with some friends, with some fellows. And we have established the Ethiopian Students and Alumni Association. With the goal, we have the willingness, we are a very good link, as we have mentioned, to our country of origin, but we have no opportunities to work with us. And so we have established a conference um, to discuss about probably conference like the conference what we have here today. So to discuss about who we are and what do we want. So how can we come together and find out two or three points where we can work with. This was about six, six or seven years ago. So the main issue for this conference that time was let us discuss what can we contribute we have all our private, private views on political issues, on, on religious issues, on our personal expect, expectations and so on. So we have discussed and established the Ethiopian Students and Alumni Association, which is now really counting about 750 highly educated and experienced Ethiopian across the Germany. So I'll come later on this topic. So I really know and have experienced in brain drain and also in brain gain. And to tell you what brain gain is meaning in our work, let me tell you 
two or three hour projects. So, uh, as I have been introduced, um, we have established for three years ago the Ethiopian German Business Forum, it calls GCON, German Ethiopian Economic Forum, to establish a business minded um, negotiation and partnership, not in, on aid minded. Aid is good, for sure, but we have to go further. We have to go to education, we have to go to higher academics, we have to go to business. These all are spaces what have not been opened. So we have opened this space a couple of years ago. And first of all, Ethiopia has about 90 million people now. And by 2020, we have 120 million people in Ethiopia. It's almost the second largest population in Africa. So the, the country is three times bigger in the uh, uh, scale than Germany. So there is huge potential in this country and we don't have to ignore that and only work and talk about 888. So we have established GCON and GCON is now very popular and is a leading business platform of German Ethiopia. The next project what we are what we have developed is think beyond the borders. So we said we have seen it works. GCON works <coughs> for Ethiopia. So let us go a step further. <coughs> then we have uh, developed EPAD, this is Entrepreneurship Platform of African Diaspora. And we have worked on this EPAD idea since a couple of years to find supporters, funders, and so on. So finally we came up with, we do it business-like, because we would not find uh, financial support for this kind of idea. And EPAD is Entrepreneurship Platform of African Diaspora. The goal is to create entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship as an ecosystem among the African diaspora to bring them with the German small and middle-sized companies to be a partnership and to invest in their country of origin or other country in Africa. So the, the third part, what we have developed is an e-learning platform, uh, what we are currently now developing the e-learning platform, is in collaboration with the Cameroonian Association. So we have kind of uh, beyond the borders partnership with other institutions, which is very important. This point is but a, a result of experience. At the beginning, we were focused on Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia. We were focused internal, and we were focused on our conflicts. We were focused on uh, you know on, on minimal things. So when you think global, as you have said, uh, work uh, uh, local, but think global or kind of. This is a true word. So collaborate with those who are really working. So that's why we, what we have there in the e-learning platform. We are establishing a platform for Ethiopian and Cameroonian students to give them the access to education and uh, to uh, yeah to education. So these three are examples for what we are doing from here to support bringing. So back to my topic: challenge or chances. Um, to answer this question. It's not easy. We have to identify three major uh, stakeholders. The, the, this is, the first was the diaspora, is the country of the living, and the country of origin. So far, it's not complicated, I know, <laughs> to find out these three uh, stakeholders. But let me um, explain these three points or the, these three um, points on challenge and chances in example of we Ethiopians, how we made it. The Ethiopian government has identified the diaspora and its key player or key role when it comes to development, when it comes to remittances, when it comes to co-development. So they have established a desk for the diaspora in the ministries. They have established a desk in the, in the, in the embassies. And they began the communication with the diaspora. And as we have heard, there is a problem there's a problem of communication, there's a problem of building bridges, there is misunderstanding with each other or something, but we have to overcome these to solve solutions. So the government has identified this and has established uh, you know, its, its, its ports, but it's a challenge for the countries, so for Ethiopia, when it comes to communicate and addressing their goals and their offers to the diaspora. So what, what they have done is 
they have established a banking system where you can save money as a diaspora in uh, dollars and in euros, what's normally not possible, and they are beginning to offer that, but they are just in the beginning of this process. To go further by this process, you need to communicate. So that's what we are now, after six years with the Ethiopian Students and Women's Association, to negotiate with them. We are negotiating, ne negotiating with the Ethiopian Ministry of Education about e-learning and about how can we contribute. We are negotiating with the universities in Ethiopia about um, <coughs> days, of, uh, days of lecture days where we send from here our members to Ethiopia to universities to give lecture and uh, a workshop at the universities. So, and it's also a chance, uh, it's a chance for the countries because the diaspora is very, very, very important. It's very important. It's the goal to the entire world. So this is the role of the country of origin. And the diaspora's role is we have difficulties. We have, uh, we have to manage our living here in, in, in the diaspora and we have to start to think about how can we contribute. And when we're talking about how can we contribute, there are different levels. So we, can, we don't have to move back to establish brain gain. We can stay here and create brain, brain gain by supporting, uh, by supporting initiatives, by supporting groups. So the opportunity for the diaspora is first of all uh, to support the country of living and also to be engaged in the development, what's happening there, in the economic development. So we are also talking about business. Let me give you an example. Our former chairperson, Skindel Mamo from the Ethiopian Students and Women's Association, has established a company in Ethiopia, uh, I think last half year almost, about, um, it, it calls um, Ahadu, it's about uh, um, yeah, web applications and, and, and developing web applications and they are really doing very good uh, job and also very good business. So we are talking about also about bringing know-how and also creating opportunities for business. So, but it's also a challenge to work as a diaspora with governmental bodies and to uh, work, uh, yeah, to work and to overcome because we have, we have, we have been grown here or born here, grow up here and have different attitudes for sure. So this is the uh, chances and opportunities and uh, challenges by the diasporas. So the third point is the country of living. The country of residence invested a lot in you, in me, to uh, educate and, and, and you know, to, to be a part of, a uh, successful part of this society. So they don't want to face the same problem with brain drain uh, like the country of origin once does. So we see it by the Turkish, Turkish diaspora, no, not diaspora, they are Germans, but you know, the third generation Germans, or Ger Turkish Germans, with uh, master educated, or master uh, uh, second degrees, they prefer to move back and to establish business and to work in Turkey, instead of st staying here and facing challenge in, in getting jobs. So this has been something uh, has been recognized by the country. So to find out for that solution. So this is something what we have to consider. So it's a challenge for them to accept that. But I think it's uh, it's a chance for the country of living to face this as a chance and to work with that. Because when you are educated and experienced here in Germany and go back to Iran to work, you will use. German standards for your work. You will use your connections to Aachen, to Berlin, to Frankfurt, to German companies. So this kind of uh, linking to the business, it's opening German new opportunities to enter new countries uh, across the world. So we have these three major stakeholders when it comes to brain drain or when we're talking about brain gain. And they all need to overcome difficulties. We have obstacles. We have to talk about negotiation and find solutions. And um, when it comes to brain gain, you don't have to be huge organization. When we began the Ethiopian Students Association, we have been 20 the first conference. And we decided, let us discuss, let us, let us take time. It, it might be take us one year or half year, three years, but let us focus on contents and discuss about that. 
so you can grow up. So the focus should not be to be 100, 1,000, 3,000 members. The focus should be um, fruitful. I can, ah, okay, uh, now I understand the problem. I can see that. <laughs> okay, good. So, uh, so you don't have to be a huge group from the beginning on. You have to be focused. This is the starting point. It seems sometimes easier when you are a small group to find targets to uh, identify and to to um, yeah to to uh, have two two or three four targets where you can work with. Yeah? It's up to you. You can work in small groups. The most important thing is focus on your dreams. Support those who are working on similar dreams. It's so important. And th third is learn to compromise. 30% of your goal is much, much more than 0% of your goal. Target is and try to move on and learn from all steps you made on all failure you faced. It's all your decision. The world is not black or white, friends or enemies. The world is colorful and it's full of chances. Thank you.